Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Fresh Cut Flowers webinar. Um, this month, we're going to be focusing on wedding flowers. My name is Georgina Sampat, and I'm the Global Marketing Coordinator for Floor Life. And together with our technical support representative, Emma Bradford, we will bring you some useful educational flower information. And um, our target is to stick to 30 minutes. Um, as you know, the Fresh Cut Flowers webinar is a monthly initiative um, and the table on your screen shows you different dates and different topics. These are the upcoming ones. Uh, definitely take note of the ones you like and that you're interested in. Um, before I give the floor to Emma Bradford, I just wanted to mention a few things. This webinar is being recorded and we will make sure you get the link um, in the near future. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to send them to us using the chat application on your screen. Um, and at the very end, Emma will take 15 minutes to answer any questions you may have. Well, enjoy Emma's presentation and take it away, Emma. Thank you, Georgina. Hello, and welcome to the fourth webinar in our series. As Georgina just mentioned, my name is Emma Bradford. And today I will be talking to you about wedding flowers. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance. My throat is a little bit froggy today. So if I have a pause, I'll be just taking a drink and clearing everything out. So apologies. So going over our little roadmap of where I'll be taking you today. Firstly, I'll cover off some basic essentials of pre-wedding flower care and handling. Then I'll go over some wedding flower favorites and any specific needs or issues that they might have. And I'll show you some trends for 2019. How to prepare your flowers for the big day. And lastly, I'll finish with our favorite fun facts. So with basic care and handling, just as with any other flower, wedding flowers need the same care and handling as you would give to flowers you use in everyday bouquets or arrangements. So even though wedding flowers typically only need to last through one day, they still need handling and treating correctly in order for them to be at their best. Now, this starts with good hygiene. Always ensure that your buckets and cutting tools are clean before using them. Now, this means cleaning all tools and buckets with a cleaning product, such as the Floral Life Cleaner, the Cleaner Plus, or the DCD Cleaner. Next, always use a correctly dosed post-harvest solution in your clean bucket. Now, what do I mean by post-harvest product? Well, that's a general term that we use to mean any type of flower food that is used on flowers any time after they have been harvested. So depending on which type of flower you are using and when, it may be a hydration solution, such as Floralife Hydrofloor 100 or Express 100, or a transit and storage solution, such as the Floralife Express 200 or the Clear 200 powder, or it could be a flower food sachet, such as the Floralife Express Rose 300, Floralife Crystal Clear, or even the Bulb Clear 300, just to name a few. Now, if you were listening carefully, you'll notice that each post-harvest product that I just mentioned had a number in its name, which were 100, 200, or 300. So what do those numbers mean? Well, simply put, Floral Life post-harvest products are separated into three categories based on which stage of the supply chain they are used in. So anything in the 100 range of products is designed to be used at the grower level, and these products provide hydration or help address specific issues, such as botrytis or ethylene sensitivity. Next is the 200 series range of products, which are designed to be used by florists, wholesalers, or bouquet operations. And this is for the transit and storage of flowers. And lastly, is the 300 range of products, 
And these consist of all the flower food sachets and are formulas designed to be used in the last stage of the chain. Now, one of the biggest differences between the solutions labeled 100, 200 and 300 is the amount of sugar that is present in each. As the 100 is designed primarily for hydration, it has very little sugar in it. The 200 solutions contain a little bit more sugar as the flowers at this stage require a little bit of food just to help replenish the reserves that they are starting to lose. And lastly, the 300 range of foods contains the highest percentage of sugar as this is the stage when the flowers need the most energy to fully open and develop and to last as long as possible. Right, so to recap all of that, the three general categories of post-harvest products are the 100 level, and that's designed for hydration or to address specific issues. These contain the least amount of sugar. The 200 level, designed for transit and storage, and these contain a little bit more sugar. And lastly, the 300 level, and that's designed to be used in the vase and contains the most sugar of all. So. Now you know all about the different sugar levels, let's talk about dosing. If you look at any of our post-harvest products, you will see each one has a dosage amount, whether it is five mils per litre or 10 grams per quart or litre, whatever it is, it will be clearly marked on the container. Now, what does this dosage amount mean? Is it there as a suggestion? No. That dosage would have been calculated based on many, many lab trials and identified as being the optimal dosage so you get the best out of your flowers. Now, there may be some of you out there thinking, whatever, sure, flower food will help my flowers to open and last longer, but if I use less, it's going to work the same and I'll save money. Well, firstly, I can tell you that your flower food costs less than one cent per stem. So it's already pretty cheap for the benefits that you get. And underdosing is a false economy, my friend. By using less than the correct dosage, you will have added some sugar to your solution, but there won't be enough of the other ingredients to create an environment that is inhospitable to bacteria. So what will happen is that the bacteria will go, woohoo, food, but there won't be enough post-harvest product to keep them in check. And trust me, there will always be bacteria, no matter how clean you work. And that's because they'll be on the stems, they'll be on the air, they are everywhere. The goal of good hygiene is to do what you can to reduce the levels of bacteria as much as possible, but you're never going to eliminate it. So, if too little food is bad, how about too much? If the correct amount of food is good, Surely more is better? Well, why use more if you don't need to? Whether you underdose or overdose, either way, you're wasting money. Now I've thoroughly bent your ear about post-harvest products. You'll be wondering why the only picture on this slide shows flowers in a cooler. Well, that's because temperature is probably the best tool that you can use to ensure that your flowers perform at their best. And that's especially true during the summer months when most weddings occur. It's very important to keep your flowers at one to three degrees C. Keeping, and also keeping your flowers in a cooler after they have reached your desired opening stage is a perfect way to ensure that they don't go over before your event. Now, let's look at some pretty flowers for a while to let our brains cool down and process all that technical information. So, carnations. Florists love them. Consumers, not so much. And it's a shame because carnations are a true workhorse. They can look gorgeous and they last forever if treated right and they are available year round. But on a positive note, breeders have been developing some beautiful varieties which are miles away from the bright red, yellow, 
or pink carnations, which gave this flower a bad reputation for being garish and unsophisticated. So if you are struggling with brides or grooms who won't even consider carnations, try introducing them to some of the beautiful new varieties that are available. Chrysanthemums have suffered a similar fate to that of carnations. But again, breeders have been producing some lovely new varieties, which are definitely worth a second look. And these are not just suitable for autumn weddings. Now, chrysanthemums are classified into six different types based on the shape of their heads. And these are spider, mop head, or incurve, and there are others as well. Now, a beautiful example of an incurve chrysanthemum is the variety Avignon, as in the Pont d'Avignon. And this is shown in the center picture of this slide. Now, that, is current, that chrysanthemum would melt the resolve of any bride or groom resistant to allowing chrysanthemums in their wedding flowers. So explore the new varieties on offer and make the most of this hardy stalwart. Let's look at some more delicate flowers. Now with hydrangea, the clue is in the name. And the name hydrangea comes from the word hydor, meaning water, and angos, meaning jar or vessel. So roughly translated, hydrangea means water vessel, which is fitting because it is a very thirsty cut flower. So what makes it so thirsty? Well, if you remember back to the very first webinar, Botany 101, when I showed you how to identify the different parts of the flower, well, you'd be forgiven to think that the large showy part on a hydrangea are the petals, but you'd be wrong. Look carefully at the picture on the right and you will see five tiny petals. I've added some helpful arrows to show you. So, if these tiny things are the petals, what are the big showy things behind them? Well, those are the sepals. What? I hear you cry. But they're not green. That's very true. But remember, I told you that not all flowers will look like you expect them to. Okay, now we know those big showy things are sepals. Why should we even care? other than now we can show off to our friends that we know something that they probably don't. Well, as you remember, sepals are leaf-like structures and leaves have pores called stomata, through which water transpires and is lost. So although those sepals may look pretty, in reality, they are a mass of tiny water-releasing holes and that's what makes them so thirsty. So, your bride or groom wasn't tempted by the carnations or chrysanthemums and insists on filling every nook of the venue with hydrangea. What can you do? Have no fear, help is here. The key to good hydrangea is hydration, cold storage and reducing that transpiration. Now, Fluorolife Hydrate Hydrangea 100 is formulated especially for hydrangea or if that's not available in your area, then Floralife Express Clear 100 will also work. Next, making Floralife Quick Dip 100 a part of your prepping and hydration routine will help to promote hydration, which is especially important for hydrangea. Once they're hydrated, keep the hydrangea in the cooler at one to three degrees as much as possible. And this will minimize the risk of dehydration from transpiration. And then lastly, use an anti-transpirant spray, such as the finishing touch or the crowning glory. And those will help to lock in the moisture into those sepals. Now, for the bride or groom who craves a wildflower look, scabious are just the thing. Harvested when starting to show color, and the first whirl of flowers has opened, they are surprisingly long lasting given their delicate appearance. Now, they are ethylene sensitive, 
So do make sure that your grower treats them with an anti-ethylene treatment, such as the Floralife Ethylguard or Ethylblock. Then once you receive them, treat them as any other flower and store in transit or storage solution and store them in the cooler until they're needed. And just when you thought I'd forgotten about the most popular wedding flower, I actually saved the best for last. So what can I tell you about roses that you don't already know? Well, firstly, know your varieties. Not all roses are created equal. So familiarize yourself with the different varieties and how they behave. Now you can do this really easily by setting up a vase of a new variety, anywhere where you work, somewhere that you can observe it every day and just observe how they open and how they last over time. Now, as a general rule, some issues to look out for in roses are bluing, especially in the reds or dark pink varieties, and bruising and creasing in the whites and pales. And the way to avoid that is just handle gently and feed they definitely need food. Again, refrigeration is your friend. So keep your flowers in the cooler until you need them. And looking at some trends for 2019, unstructured bohemian bouquets are a firm favorite. And you'll be glad to hear that greens and foliage play a prominent role in these. Cascading bouquets like Princess Diana's are also making a comeback but on a smaller scale, thank goodness. So you've received the flowers, the big days and four days, but your flowers are all in bud and you need them to be open and looking gorgeous. What do you do? Well, just as with any of your regular stock, these stems need to be placed in post-harvest solution in a clean bucket. That's the first step. Then, if you need them to open, store them in ambient until they reach a desired opening stage. And by ambient, I mean room temperature, roughly somewhere between 15 and 20 degrees C. And then once they've reached the desired opening stage, put them back into the cooler to hold that opening stage so it doesn't open anymore. Now, what you definitely shouldn't do is do not use warm water in the bucket for the post-harvest solution. Do not place the flowers in direct sunlight or near a heat source. Do not physically force the flowers open with your fingers. And please don't blow on them. These are all bad habits and they can harm vase life at the end of the day. So I don't want you to think of forcing flowers to open. Instead, they need to be gently coaxed. Think of it this way. Have you ever tried to force a child or a pet to do something that they really didn't want to do? Well, trust me, it doesn't work very well and usually ends in tears, typically mine. Coaxing and encouraging, although it takes more time, works much better. Now remember, you can catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar. And it's the same principle with your flowers. Treat them right and they will reward you. Also, remember that refrigeration is your friend. Once your flowers have reached your desired opening stage, keep them in the cooler until you need them. Keep them cool while in transit too. You wouldn't leave your dog in a hot car, so don't do it to your flowers either. And then lastly, think about where your flowers will be on the big day. Will it be the cool interior of a stone church or a warm, bright function room next to a radiator? Will they be outdoors in the elements or indoors next to a heat source? No matter where they go, once they leave the sanctity of your premises, you have little control over what they will be exposed to. So, what can you do? Well, 
if the flowers are to be displayed in a container, whether it's with flower foam or in free water, make sure to keep the flower food solution topped up. Use an anti-transpirant spray, such as Floralife Finishing Touch or Crowning Glory. Now this is especially helpful on the flowers which will not have any water, such as the bridal bouquets, bridal party bouquets, boutonnieres, and these sprays will lock in the moisture. They are also very good to help protect your arrangements from any wind, drafts, heat, or other negative elements that they might encounter. Wedding guests excluded, of course. Now, don't forget to treat your greens and fillers in the same way. It's just as important that you care for your greens and your fillers in the same way that you treat your delicate stems. They need TLC too. So no dry storage and keep them in solution in the cooler. Now you know how to get the best out of your wedding flowers. Here are a few fun facts to impress your friends. Did you know that peaches, almonds, strawberries, and even cherries and plums are all related to roses? In fact, the family that they all belong to is called Rosaceae, named after roses. The flowers on all of these plants share two traits. They all have multiple stamens and they all have a receptacle. And the strawberry is actually an inside out fruit because it carries all of its seeds on the outside. So I talked about carnations earlier and their, how their popularity has faded over the years, but it is in joinery surgeons, largely due to the new and interesting varieties. Well, here's an interesting perspective for you. Did you know that in Australia, the humble carnation is actually classed as an exotic? Who'd have thought? Now, this is an interesting royal tradition fun fact about myrtle. Apparently, Queen Victoria was given a sprig of myrtle by her husband Albert's grandmother. Victoria then planted it on the grounds of Osborne House, which is on the Isle of Wight, where the same bush still grows to this day. And it's been a tradition for royal brides to carry a sprig of this myrtle from Osborne House ever since 1858, when Queen Victoria's eldest daughter, also Victoria, carried a sprig in her bouquet when she married Frederick III of Germany. Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Diana, the Duchess of Cambridge, and the Duchess of Sussex all carried myrtle from Osborne House in their wedding bouquets from the same bush. And lastly, did you know that some species of hydrangea produce pink or blue flowers depending on the soil that they are grown in? Acidic soils produce blue flowers and alkaline soils produce pink. Now there are products that you can buy to change the colour if you'd like to, but it is easier to turn a blue flower pink than it is to turn a pink flower blue. White hydrangea, on the other hand, will always remain white. And with that, I'll take any of your questions. Thank you, Emma. That was really interesting. Uh, we did get a number of questions while you were doing your presentation. Uh, one of them is, is there a special treatment for foliage? What do you recommend? I recommend treating your foliage exactly as you would your flowers. So it's recutting, placing them on transit and storage solution and keeping them in the cooler. Um, Anti-transpirant sprays also work well on the greens, just as they do on the flowers. The only thing to take care of with the anti-transpirant sprays is um, if you have any flowers or any greens that are hairy, hirsuti, so they have like little fine hairs on them, like lamb's ear is one of those, um, the spray isn't able to actually get into contact with the surface of the leaf because it's it's the hair is in the way, basically. So it doesn't work as well on those hairy stems and flowers as it does on the smooth ones. OK, thanks for that. Um, while you were talking about hydrangeas, we, we got two comments. Um, someone shared that in Russia, florists love to use finishing touch on their hydrangeas. Yeah, definitely, because like I said, those showy parts are actually sepals. 
And because sepals are modified leaves, they have all those stomata on them. And so they actually lose more water than they would if they were a petal. So with that anti-transpirant, what it does, it just locks that moisture in and it prevents the water from being transpired out of those pores. Uh -huh. So that's a good move of them to do that. Yeah. And then someone else mentioned that German florists use quick dip. Mm. Um, they see that it has a really good result on hydrangeas. Yes, definitely. So the quick dip is designed to um, help the hydration and increase the hydration by opening those xylem vessels or keeping them from the blockages from clogging them up, basically. So anything that promotes hydration is going to work really well on hydrangea. Again, there's two words, hydor and, you know, jar, water vessel, basically. They just want moisture, 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 moisture. So anything that we can do to help promote that moisture or lock it in will really help hydrangea. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, what tips can I give a wedding party who want to take flowers home? So if your arrangements are already in the flower foam, uh, you can actually leave them in the flower foam. Just make sure to keep that flower foam topped up with water so there's always water there. But if you want to deconstruct that and put them into a vase or you've got loose flowers that you want to put into a vase, I would actually recommend if it's been in flower foam, recut them uh, and put them on the flower food. If they're already been in water, then actually probably your best bet is to use the Express 300 which is the no-cut flower food, and just place them directly into that flower food without having to recut the stems. The least that you cut them, the less stressed that they'll be, because if you imagine the flowers will have been outside all day, exposed to the elements, um, you want them to be less stressed or have as little stress as possible. So by not cutting the stems, you're going to avoid that stress on them and just put them straight into the Express 300 flower food and you'll enjoy them for quite a while afterwards. Mm -hmm. Let's see, one more. Do flowers wither more quickly after being stored in the cooler? Ooh, no. So I did talk about this in one of, in one of the previous webinars, but so flowers, because after you're, they're harvested, they're still alive and they're still doing the processes that they would normally be doing. So what they do, they have a metabolism just like we do. And when the flowers are in warm or ambient, their metabolism is quicker. So they their processes work just like we would basically. They also deplete their energy stores, which is carbohydrate and sugar that is actually inside the, the stem and the flowers, it has its stores. So any time that those flowers are in the warmth, the metabolism is speeded up it starts to use the energy stores that it has, and that actually reduces vase life. When you put your flowers in the cooler and you keep them at one to three degrees, what you're doing is you're in effect, once they're putting them to sleep, but it kind of is, it slows everything down. So it slows that metabolism. It keeps those reserves uh, from being depleted and it actually helps prolong them longer. So the, the way I like to think of it is this. So whenever your flowers are out of the cooler, it's like the difference between me walking and running a marathon or sprinting a marathon. So when they're in the cooler, that's like me walking the marathon. It'll take me a while, but eventually I'll get to the end. But when the flowers are out of the cooler, that metabolism is running quite quick. It's like sprinting a marathon and you're really not gonna get even part way because your energy is just gonna be depleted. So, yes, keep them in the cooler for as long as possible. It'll, it'll help to keep those energy stores and it'll prevent them from burning out, basically. Yeah, I know a lot of people ask if, um, you know, if you keep them in a cooler and then you take them outside, the shock of cold going into warm, if that has an influence on the flowers. It does if it's done repeatedly. So okay. I wouldn't recommend taking them out of the cooler, letting them warming up, going back into the cooler. That is to be avoided. Okay. You want them to be out of the cooler for as little as possible until they're to be enjoyed, basically. So yeah. once they reach the, the consumer's home, that's when you want them to really have that metabolism going, you want them to open up, you want them to, to last as long as possible. So any time that they are not at the consumer's home, it's best to keep them in cold storage. Okay. 
Um, I have a question which I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer, but that we can always get back to this person um, okay. by a mail. Could you explain what the difference is between DCD and the regular cleaner? Hmm. Yeah, that's something I think we would have to to come back on. I, from what I understand, and I think it depends on what region of the world you're in, what is what is available. But the DCD stands for clean. Oh, sorry, deodorize, disinfect, and clean, basically. So it's actually a disinfectant, whereas the cleaner is more of a detergent. But I'll have to verify that. Mark might be able to help us out with that. But I believe okay. that's the main difference. And even if you just use a detergent to clean your tools and your vases or your buckets, that is taking off any surface bacteria that might be there. So it's still going to be help in the hygiene part. The, the disinfect part, it just takes it that little step further and there's a little bit more residual action with that disinfection than it would be with a detergent. But definitely the detergent is better than nothing. Okay. Then that was it. I think we've answered, yeah, we've answered all the questions. Um, thank you everyone for your time and your attention. And Emma, thank you so much for the interesting presentation. And we'll see you all next month for the next Fresh Cut Flowers webinar. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Georgina. You're welcome.